Hello, Leib Group viewers. Welcome to Leib.com, L-E-E-B.com. Today is September 7th, the year 2010. Sovereign debt worries are again coming into the spotlight in Europe. A report by a private German bank concluded that uh, default by one of EU's country would lead to a collapse of many banks. This isn't really shocking news, of course, but in combination with worrisome recent signs about the European economy, it doesn't help to inspire any confidence. The yields for sovereign debt of the troubled nations are again rising, signaling a deterioration of investor confidence. The yield spread between Greek bonds and German bonds considered to be the safety benchmark. For example, is uh, back to the levels unseen since the Greek bailout was announced in May. Although strong demand for Portuguese bonds earlier today helped to assuage some fears, Europe still faces a tough task trying to reduce deficits while trying to fight off the ill effects of austerity measures at the same time. Germany, one of the few bright spots in Europe, recently uh, booking its fastest quarterly G GDP growth in two decades, unexpectedly experienced a fall in factory orders for the month of July, <laughs> signaling a drop in demand and in particular for exports. Exports, of course, aided by the cheaper euro, have played a big role in keeping the European economy afloat. If the fall in exports turns into a trend, then that certainly doesn't bode well for Europe or the euro. The European Central Bank, ECB, uh, currently has an emergency loan program in place to meet whatever short-term liquidity needs that arise, but if economic data deteriorates significantly, uh, more large-scale debt purchases of the ECB on the open market quantitative easing could be on its way. Should this occur, the inflationary pressures created will cause the euro to fall even further. Uh, of course, the Federal Reserve may launch its own round of quantitative easing too, which would have a similar dilutive effect on the dollar as well. The ultimate winner, of course, should be gold and to a lesser extent other precious metals. Silver is certainly responding well, has rallied roughly 10% in the last two weeks, and is trading at a fresh 52-week high. Indeed, the volatility in equity markets puts the possibility of more monetary easing from major banks that have helped drive both gold and silver prices to near record levels. Thank you for stopping by, and we'll see you tomorrow.